time now for the Sunday Roundtable and socially distanced version of the Roundtable as things are this morning. Joining us this morning are Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political analyst Jenny Buckingham. It's great to see you guys. You just heard Congressman McGovern. Let me just put this on the table. He says that, that, the, that the issue of, of systemic racism in the NFL should reach Congress. What's, uh, what's your reaction to that? Uh, Marianne, let me start with you. Jim McGovern's right. Congress should hold hearings and the Department of Justice should investigate and probably bring some kind of civil rights charges. I, I, it takes them both too long to do anything, but that, that's no excuse for acting in this case because God knows Roger Goodell his $64 million salary mm -hmm. hasn't gotten the job done. Well, Ginny, it, it, it is remarkable, say what you will, if 70% of the entertainment force of the National Football League are, are people of color and, and approximately 0% in management are, are, are anything other than white people, the balance is, how do you defend the balance? Right, I mean, math doesn't lie. And right. That's pretty bad math. And sometimes the right person is in the right place at the right time in history. And perhaps Brian Flores is that guy for the NFL at this time. And if the dominoes fall there, Hopefully it will be an example to continue this fight for racial justice. No, but, but not to belabor the point, should, 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 is this something that Congress should look into? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one, one quick thing. 70 per, Eddie, to your point, 70% of players are black. Yeah. One black coach. One black zero coach. Black co uh, zero GMs. Right. That's, How many owners? And zero owners. Right. That, so that tells you everything. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's turn our attention back here to Massachusetts. The attorney general seat is shaping up. Uh, two candidates have run statewide before, Shannon Liss Reardon for the U.S. Senate and Quentin Palfrey for the lieutenant governor. But now Andrea Campbell, who ran for Boston mayor, has entered the race. So how does the starting lineup look to you, Ginny? You know, it's interesting. Voters have tended to like to put prosecutors in the attorney general's seat. Think Martha Coakley, think Scott Harshberger, even more Healy was a prosecutor in the AG's office. But that's not really the job of that office. It, it's really incumbent on these candidates to make the case that the job is more of an advocate. And Andre Campbell certainly has been that. Marianne? Too early to tell. I mean, all three of these candidates have run races before. All three have lost the most recent race they ran. Mm -hmm. All three will raise money, and all three have a different um, attribute. Mar you know, Andrea Campbell has name recognition. Uh, Shannon Liss Reardon has uh, labor endorsements, and Quentin Palfrey has activists. So we shall see. Um, I will say it's going to come down. Who's the better candidate? Who runs the better campaign? I will point to the fact that Andrea Campbell did raise $100,000 in her first day, but didn't have an Act Blue page up. So let's get it together here people. Everyone's got money, everyone's got different things, but you got to run a great campaign. But in the end, it probably will come down to money. Is that fair to say, Marianne, uh, Jenny? And a good candidate. I mean, money can only get you so far. Andrea Campbell lost her last race and had a ton of money. Shannon had a ton of money and she didn't, and she lost the Senate race, so we'll see. Next item, the governor's race. Headlines are rarely made when a political consultant joins a campaign, but in Jeff Deal's campaign, Corey Lewandowski on board. Lewandowski is a lightning rod. He's now on board with Deal, who is leaning further and further right. What is the real end game here, Ginny? So it's frustrating for those of us who care about two-party government and who would like a real chance to have a Republican governor follow Charlie Baker. Whether he's trying to reprise the role of the captain of the Titanic, that's really the only thing he could win at this point if he's going to double down on the Trump ties. Marianne? Well, this is all about Donald Trump running for president in 2024 and getting ready for the New Hampshire primary. And so they're trying to seed the ground here in Massachusetts to show that um, by going a deal being the proxy for Trump here, Trump has also asked uh, uh, Lewandowski to take out Chris Sununu, the Republican mm -hmm. governor of New Hampshire. Sixty percent of New Hampshire voters are in the Boston media market. So this is now going to become an all Trump campaign all the time here in Massachusetts when we've been able to avoid the divisive, racist, dirty, dirty politics of Donald Trump and his minions and Jeff Deal and Corey Lewandowski are at the top of the list. To your point, Ginny, with uh, former U.S. Attorney Andrew Lelling out, Chris Doty uh, seems to be the GOP moderate hoping to sweep up Charlie Baker's support. Do you think he can do this? You know, for me, it was a messy rollout because his message was confusing. Is he a moderate? He voted for Hillary Clinton, okay, but he also voted for Donald Trump. He leans pro-life, or maybe he doesn't. It's all very confusing, and if he wants to attract independence into that primary, which is what he has to do to beat Jeff Deal, if he wants to attract endorsement of a Charlie Baker, he's got to clear up his message. Uh, is Jenny right, Marianne, that he needs to do a better job of defining himself before we even 
are able to read any of these tea leaves? Yeah, it's all that in a bag of chips. I mean, the fact is, when you look at polling right now, it, unenrolled voters in Massachusetts are going to flock to the Democratic primary. They have no reason not to. You look at Jeff Deal and the Trump votes here. Over a million people voted for Trump here in Massachusetts. That would blow Doty out of the water. So he needs a better campaign. He needs to put a ton more money into this race. And he needs a better message. And he needs to be a better candidate. Just those, make those unsalted chips, though, Mary. Yeah, the unsalted variety. <laughs> Let's turn to the Democratic side. And, we, and Danielle Allen pushed further and further left this week. She called for the decriminalization of small amounts of heroin as well as other illegal drugs. Does this leave the middle lane wide open for more Healy, Marianne? This is less about labels and more about leading. And the fact is the stakes went way up this week, given the ent entry of Lewandowski and Trump into the Massachusetts governor's race. So this is about who can lead and who can win. And Democrats only win one this race once every 30 years. Everything's on the table in Massachusetts in 2022. So uh, Danielle Allen has precious little opportunity to win this race. People are going to be looking to see who can win the Democratic primary and win the governor's race in November against Deal, Trump, and Lewandowski. Jenny? You know, she called herself a legalizer when she rolled out this, this plan. What she won't be calling herself is governor <laughs> or even the nominee for governor. This is far out of the mainstream. Is it smart for her to say out front, I am a progressive, uh, Jenny uh, Marianne? Progressive is one thing, but kind of loony left is another, and that's where she's headed. Well, I laughed when she 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 said Maura Healy was rebranding herself, and Danielle Allen, until not too long ago, was a very conservative right-wing Republican. So we've come a long way.